Welcome back to Humans of CSU. I'm here with Lillian, the equine, equine sciences major. We are here in the BW Pickett Arena, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you tell me a little bit about this place? So this arena is where we have a lot of our classes for many of the programs in the equine science program here at CSU. So we also use it for a lot of the clubs. The polo team will practice in here for a lot of their nights as well. They hold competitions in here. And as you can see, it's set up for the Skyline Stampede that'll happen this weekend. And that's the big rodeo that the rodeo club puts on every year. And it's the oldest running collegiate rodeo in the country. Cool. All right, well, let's take a tour. Sounds I'll follow good. you. Legends of Ranching program are from all across the country mm -hmm. and they come to us from ranches like Haythorn, Crowfoot, Spurcross and they're all really big ranches that are a big part of the industry. Mm -hmm. So those are all young horses that have really not had any experience, they haven't been trained or ridden, so the students are responsible for bringing all those colts ready to be for the sale. Okay. And then a different program that we have is the Right Horse program mm -hmm. which is what all of these horses are for in the stalls. Oh. And these are the rescue horses horses. Okay. And they also like to call them horses in transition because many of them for one reason or another they can't stay there and they're looking for somewhere else to go. So students are also responsible for helping these horses get trained and get ready to be for our new home. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different experience than the Colts because they don't yeah. have any experience and these right. ones maybe have experience that is good or maybe not so good. Right, yeah, they have a little bit of a history. There's definitely a big variety of them. Yeah. They come from all over the place. There's ponies, draft horses, paints, quarters. They come from all over. Yeah, hello everyone. It's nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> So typically this barn is open for a lot of the year. The right horses come in here sometimes and then during the sale we stall all of the young horses as well as the age horses that come through the sale as well. So in the month of April it's definitely very crowded in here but for the rest of the time it's usually pretty open. Okay, cool. So tell me a little bit more about the Equine Sciences program. What else is there to do? So we have pretty much everything and anything. So there's one side of it is a lot of science and so we have your fundamentals like genetics, mm -hmm. nutrition, anatomy, disease, stuff like that, so that our students really have a good basis when they go into the industry about knowing all aspects of the horse. Mm -hmm. And then for our program, we also require 12 business credits, so students get a lot of the business experience as well. Okay. So we have a lot of students that kind of focus more towards the sciences or more mm -hmm. focus more towards the events management and the business side of it. Mm -hmm. So you can really get anything and everything that you want from the program. Very cool. Yeah. these horses and what are they doing here? So a lot of these horses are program horses. Most of the horses on the right hand side are horses that we use for the English riding classes and okay. for some of the other English prep for competition and Western prep for competition classes. So they're program horses that students are allowed to ride for their classes and that way they can get some experience in that way as well. So there are actual English riding classes here mm -hmm. at CSU? Yeah, we have an English prep for competition class and that teaches students how to ride in saddle and they do a little bit of jumping as well once the students are more advanced. Oh wow, yeah. very cool. Really cool. Yeah, and then these guys over here. Some of these guys are used for the equine activities, equine assisted activities and therapies. Mm -hmm. So they help people with disabilities and they can be used in a lot of different ways for that. They can help people with physical disabilities or mental disabilities. So EEAT stands for equine assisted activities and therapies and a lot of people use that for people that are disabled or in any other way like youth programs a lot we'll use it for at risk youths mm -hmm. and we have a program here where we let different businesses come in like front range exceptional questions and they come in and use our facilities okay. and our students are able to 
volunteer with those programs and get experience in the EAT field and get to help people that way. Okay, so how are these horses trained to help people with disabilities then? So a lot of them is based on their disposition, so you need horses that are going to be calm and quiet, and a lot of it focuses on their motion as well, because different types of movement under the horse can help a person with different dif disabilities, and it can help them maybe learn to walk, because it's a similar movement as well as when we walk. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times it's based on movement, or based on height, size, it kind of depends on what they're being used for, on what their training or their background would be. And is it mostly uh, children that they're helping with? It's all ages. Oh. Anybody with any kind of disability can participate. There's a lot of children as well as adults, mm -hmm. so it's all over the place. Oh, really cool. Yeah. Very nice. Do you know any of the horses out here? So we have Zane. He's the one with his rear end towards us, uh -huh. and you can tell who that is because he has a big Z shaved oh. onto his hip. Yeah. So he's one of the horses that we use in the equine um, for English classes. Friendly. He is very friendly. Nice to meet you, buddy. Oh, yeah, you want treats. I have none. <laughs> Sorry, no food for you. No food for you. Yeah, yeah. So, why are they shaped like that then? The so, it helps them when they work so they don't get so sweaty when they have their big winter coats. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, when they shed out in the summer, it's not as big of an issue, but they get used a lot in the winter. So, it'll help them. That guy seems to have his own built-in pad on his back. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of times they'll leave the area over their back with uh -huh. hair on it still because that's where the saddle sits. Uh -huh. So they don't want it to rub on their skin too much if maybe they have a little bit of a sensitive back. But Zane's pretty close shaven besides his nice little name. Yeah. How sweet. <laughs> so he's easy to figure out who's who. Uh -huh. 